Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 38. This time we're going to carry on looking at our sniper scope and we're going to make a little zooming animation without actually using animation. I'm also going to take a quick look at some reflection probes. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, click the bell icon to stay up to date with the rest of this series and everything else I have on this channel. And with that in mind, let's take a look at our scope. So at the moment, as it stands, when we press play and try to zoom in with our scope, we can, but it just goes from one to the other, like so, just kind of on, off. Uh, one also thing to note here is, uh, yes, it's a little bit oval. However, this is only due to the aspect ratio of my current Unity setup. If you were in full 1080, it would look a little bit more round, but that doesn't mean that you can't necessarily change the shape of that scope. It's your game after all. So. Let's get into Sniperscope Active Script, and we're going to add in a couple of variables. We're going to add in a couple of lines of code and a couple of if statements. Basically, we're going to allow ourselves to modify this field of view number in steps. So it kind of gives the impression of zooming in, and we can do it as fast or as slow as we like. So let's add in those extra variables. So public, int, and we'll have this field view semicolon not field of view we'll just call this field view the abbreviated version that we're going to replace with these numbers uh, by default i think we'll have that as 60 because that's what we have it down here uh, next is going to be a bool true or false true are we zooming in false are we not so public bool zooming in by default that will be false because we won't be zooming in that would be silly so what we need to do is add in an if statement within this if statement. So if input dot get mouse button down after here, we need to say if zooming in equals false, then do the following. So open curly bracket and you can delete that close curly bracket and place it after original cursor dot set active and it will kind of indent that nicely. So what we have to do here is we have to add in starting a coroutine and also setting zooming in to true. So we'll start that coroutine. So underneath void update, go down a couple of lines and we'll have I enumerator and you can call this whatever you want. And I'm gonna call it zooming cam. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And within here, we need a while statement to say while the field of view is greater than 25, like we have here, then we need to create that zooming effect. So while, and in brackets, field view is greater than 25, because we have 25 here, we established that was our zoom destination. Close bracket, open curly bracket, and now within here, what we can do is we can take this line of code, play account or get component, making it 25. So cut that out of there, place it here, and now change the number 25 to field view. And that's that variable that we've stated here. So this is what we now need to change. So every time this while statement runs, we're gonna make the field of view equal to field view, but then we're gonna take one away. So field view minus equals one. Now the higher this number, the quicker it will zoom in. The lower this number, the slower it will zoom in. So you could theoretically zoom in much slower than what this will, but you probably need to change this from being an integer to a float. And uh, next thing we need to do is yield return new wait for seconds. And in brackets, this is going to be a minuscule number because basically we want it to zoom in at least at a decent rate. So I'm going to put 0.01 F, close bracket, semicolon. So we've got that written. What does that mean? That means we now have to activate it when we have the mouse button down and we're not zooming in. So I'm going to delete out that blank line there. And underneath original cursor dot set active false, let's have start co routine, if I spell it right. And in brackets, zooming cam, open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon. And then we'll set zooming in equals true, just so we don't re-trigger this whole thing all over again constantly, which will probably end up crashing Unity. 
So, after that, what happens when we bring our mouse button up? Well, if we're zooming in, we need to stop that actually happening, don't we? We need to stop it from zooming in and just come back to our normal view. So that means we need to stop all the coroutines in this script. So, stop all coroutines. Open close bracket, semicolon. After that, we can set the field view back to 60, which was our default value. And I guess you could also put that here instead of having a hard number, just so we keep everything nice and uniform. So it'd be the same line of code here, field view. So regardless, it would set it back to 60 because that's what it's set as at the moment. And then the final thing to do after original cursor is set zooming in equals false because we're not zooming in anymore. Semicolon and save the script. So let's check this out. Head back to Unity and wait for it to think and compile the script. No errors, perfect. So what I'm going to do is select the FPS controller, select character and click on gun mechanics and we can see those extra two variables there. Now let's press play. Let's quickly pick up a gun and let's try zooming in. There we go. So we can see zooming in. As soon as we let go, we go back to our normal view. So let's try bringing up the mouse button before we fully zoomed in. And there we go, we can see we come back to our normal view. Now, I did say earlier we could zoom in as fast as we wanted, so let's zoom in twice as fast. Let's change this to 2 and resave. Head back into Unity, press play, and now we should be able to zoom in twice as fast. See, yep, zooming in much faster. So, like I said, the higher that number, the quicker we will zoom in. So I'm going to keep it as two. So I want to move on to reflection probes now. Now throughout this series we've dealt with light in different ways and we've seen different things and it look, it's been looking different as we've gone throughout the series. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is going to feed on nicely to the next episode or tutorial I should say. So let's zoom in on first person controller and we'll start with, in fact, we'll start with this room here because I think this one is a bit bigger and a bit more fun to play around in. So let's move our character into here. And now if we go to game object, go to light and go to reflection probe, we should see a bit of a change. Now straight away it will go dim and then it will come back on and the reflection probe just basically looks a bit like a ball. Now what we can do is we can set the intensity to be quite high, but you can see what happens there but that is not relative to the scene itself in real time. So let's change the type from baked to real time. And now what we can see is that we're having an effect on what is happening to the scene itself. Our ground has changed. Our wall has gone a bit, well, it's pretty much the same, but it, it is a little bit shinier, I should say. Uh, so what we can do now is change the box size. So I'm gonna change the box size for this reflection probe to fit this entire room. So let's have this as X by 20 and Z also by 20. And you can see how much it's impacting the world around it now and how much, dare I say, a grittier look. Now we could change the intensity to two, maybe 20, but you can see what happens. 200 is insane. So let's try five, in fact, no. I'm gonna stick with one. Now this is where the whole lighting situation comes in. The reflection pro, uh, pro probe, I can't pronounce my words there, will actually make the floor, at least in this case, a little bit different. So click on the floor, click down here, and then let's change the smoothness to be higher. And you can see how it's reflecting or giving a reflection effect on the floor itself. The same will also apply to the ceiling, simply because it's the same object, same texture. But you could also change the metallic look of it, and you can see just how much it changes here. Now we could theoretically do the same with this bit of the wall. So if we click the wall, click here, change the source to albedo alpha, and you can see already just how much of an impact that's, have, that's having right there. Uh, I think all these walls all do follow the same kind of structure, don't they? They're all the same. Uh, so if we bring the smoothness to about there, but have the metallic higher, you can see what kind of effect that's having. Let's change the normal map to 0.5 just to reduce it a little bit. And let's bring this light over here maybe. 
you can see how it's having an impact on the floor already just by moving it up and down. So at the same time, what we could do is let's find that original directional light that we had, this one, and let's turn it on. And let's turn some of these lights off a little bit. So I'm going to take this light here, I'm going to disable it, but I'm going to have that directional light, if I can find it again. So let's search. Directional light right there. And we could rotate. You won't see too much of a difference. Let's try rotating on the Y. You can see how that's having an impact right there. So let's change the shadows to soft shadows just to see how it reacts. And let's change the intensity up a little bit. And you can see how it's impacting here already. But this is mainly down to the reflection probes. So let's also now go into the window settings, lighting right here, and let's change from color to skybox. And you should be able to see how these have now changed. So the image of how they look, they're quite bright. Let's change the sky map to the default. So default skybox. And yep, already you can see how much of an impact that is having. Now let's get rid of this roof ceiling because do we really want it? In fact, I'm going to put it back on for now. And now let's head back to that reflection probe. So this reflection probe, let's increase the, let's have box projection ticked. And you can see how that's now having an impact on the world around it already. I feel like this is a little bit too bright for what it actually is. So let's click on this texture and let's change to albedo alpha. I'm going to change the normal map in fact should we let's have it as half or should we have it as let's have it as one change the smoothness to about there and the metallic to about there maybe and finally let's try playing around with this once again so we change that to about there normal map let's have as one again on that and finally if we head back to the reflection probe we can change clear flag if we want to culling well, we've dealt with that kind of stuff before, especially with our gun. Uh, but essentially, you can decide how important it actually is. Not that it's really made too much of a difference right now. But let's keep it as one. Intensity, two. And now, let's press play and have a look at the world around us. So you can see the world is much more grittier now. It has a bit more... I'm not sure what the word is. Looks like there are some spiders and... over there. It just has a, a little bit more to it rather than the kind of bland, boring, horrible world that we had originally. So reflection probes inside and outside do make a difference. As we've seen, this reflection probe has given us you know, a dingy kind of look in here. But if we head outside over to, let's say, this section here, let's add a reflection probe here. So game object and light and reflection probe. And once again, let's change it to real time. And we can change the intensity, but that will change pretty much everything in this section. You can see how much of an impact that is having altogether. I think it's a little bit too much, kind of snowy. So let's have it back as one, but let's increase the box size to 50 by 50 by 50. And let's click on box projection. Now it's not going to make too much of a difference here simply because the textures we're using in this section aren't necessarily reflective, hence reflection probe. However, if we come here and go inside this house here, let's add a reflection probe inside. So light, reflection probe, and now let's change it to real time. And you can see how much it kind of impacts how it looks inside this house. We can change the box projection. Not that it will make too much of a difference within this general area. Uh, let's move it a bit more center. And if we go to window, lighting, settings. Finally, let's change how this skybox can react. So we could have the skybox as literally nothing. And you can see now how this looks inside here. So what this basically is, is a way of maybe enhancing, modifying or altering the graphics for your game. So let's press play and have a look at how these uh, reflection probes have now modified the game. Looks like there's so some spiders over here. there. 
how it has an impact. Here, we can see not quite as bland anymore. Certainly not as bland as it was <laughs> up until this point. And let's open the door. Now we can see how it looks inside here. So, what I would recommend is playing around with reflection probes because they're not that complicated. There's not too many settings to play with and you can always modify and change what you see. So, I said this is going to bring us on nicely to the next tutorial. The next tutorial, we are going to take a look at uh, some screen effects. So, we'll work a little bit with Bloom. We'll work a little bit with sun shafts and we'll see what we can actually come up with. And we'll also look at finally building, completing, compiling and testing that game product. So next tutorial will be the last one of this series. But don't worry, guys, I will explain where we can go from here, what you can watch to advance your techniques further and how you can take your game even further than that. So, guys, until that next tutorial, thank you very much for watching.